in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Stub Nuff 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always and respect you. Welcome y'all to RRNN New. Real nigga new. Four nigga, five nigga, four real nigga. I'm the damn Jake, 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 <laughs> JP Wiley. Sorry, my, my golden sheep. Top, top story. Ain't a nut nut, you a bitch. That's right. You a motherfucking bitch. That's right. I'm saying it in your face, nigga. You a bitch. You a big man, nigga. Ain't a nut nut. You, you expose me for where I am. Bitch, nigga. But before I get there, I gotta get rid of it. I gotta get rid of this gold. Mess it up with. I can't talk as is. Mess it up with my speech. Damn angel. For a nigga. Buy a real nigga. Peace. I'm that damn JG. For I get on this bitch ass nigga. Angel nut nut. I'm gonna have to sell my books to you. They on sale. Books on sale, J.T. Riley. My first book, now, here's the deal. You get all seven of my books for 50 cents. All the proceeds go to my charity for the homeless and illiterate. My first book, Runaway Ralph. That's about a little rat that I met when I was in prison. Cause JT hard like that. And I still got the little rat at my house. Damn straight. Got something to say about that nut nut? Punk bitch. My next book, one of my books is called Four Gray Rats. Cause JT barely made it to the fourth grade. And if you notice, my friend, Ralph in it. Cause JT messed with the rat cause rats is ghetto. I'm keeping it real. JT is a class clown. This is a beautiful book. This is a story about my life. Punk bitch ain't enough enough. You ain't real. You fake. And pay my fake too. And the ultimate book I want y'all to get from JT. I am that damn JT Riley. Is my book called Hairburn Phonics. Because I wait till I get till I'm 30 years old to learn how to read. But reading is fundamental, motherfucker. Bitch, but I'm sick of anger, nut nut. Don't forget to get my books now. Especially this one. It's the story of my life. JT in the motherfucking house. Bitch mother, mother, and a bitch in the, you motherfucker, and piss my ass and suck my dick and all. Hey, I'm talking some hot, hot stuff. You can't, hey, ain't enough there. You can't mess with me. Ain't you team up, symbolic? Y'all can't mess with me. I got a whole list. I ain't enough to try to expose y'all brother, JT Riley. JT, you can't mess with me. Never, never. Because 
real recognize real. In other words, an illiterate and an ignorant person recognize illiteracy and we take advantage of it. Because I got smart in prison. I know an illiterate motherfucker when I see him, so I'm going to explore them. Dig it? <laughs> you going to try to bust me out? No, I don't give a damn about what you say. And you nut nut. They don't love JT because JT real. Your motherfucking ass fake. I'm almost 40 years old. And I'm trying to pretend like I'm part of the youth. The youth is between teenager, 25, 26 years old. I'm a son of a bitch going on 40 years old. And I'm, the, and I'm talking about I'm a youth. I already know I ain't no youth. But everybody doing it for it, my old ass. <laughs> these some do, these some dumb, stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> but ain't hey, nothing. Don't forget you a bitch. The reason why I wear dreadlocks, if you really want to know, I ain't your nut nut. You motherfucking suck my dick, bitch. Kiss my ass. Cause I don't want to wash my hair. I don't want to comb my hair. It's easy and it's manageable. Put some apple machine on it. Go for days and days and days. Motherfucker. None of your business anyway. I ain't the nut nut. You a... You know something? You a bitch, babe. <laughs> you a bitch, babe. <laughs> what else you got? Oh. Yeah. You know, I usually wear a, 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 a golf cap. And you know I got my teeth in my mouth, my gold. But you done exposed me so much, my gold done turned silver, and my hair done turned white from worry. But, but JT, I'm real. I can get over that. t my you're bitch made, nigga. All y'all, old fogies, is bitch made. Yeah, I, I wear a beret, a golf cap, and I, and I got gold teeth in my mouth like it's still 1976. 1977, the early 80s, gold teeth been played out. But that just show you how real JT, that damn JT is. Motherfuckers don't go no matter how I roll. That just show you how sharp the JT mind is. What else you be talking about? You say I don't have my own teaching. Why I gotta, why I gotta have my own teaching, ain't a bitch nut nut. You bitch made motherfucker, kiss my ass, suck my dick, bitch made. <laughs> you, hey, cuss and make you upset, don't it nothing up. I know it do. Yeah, I know it do, punk ass. I don't need to make up no teaching. All that I can do is copy what the nation of Islam talk about, what the Hebrew Israelites talk about, what, 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 uh, 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 the Moorish side talk about. Flip it around a little bit and make it JT. Because JT an individual. I'm an original motherfucker. Put that in your damn nut nut cap, bitch. I'm the second coming of Tupac. I'm y'all leader. You a bitch mad motherfucker ain't just nut nut because you want to be leader. Your punk ass ain't no leader, bitch motherfucker. I'm the leader. I'm the second coming of Tupac. I'm the real prophet. I can lead y'all stupid niggas. All I heard there, you stupid ass nigga bitch. You ain't, you ain't listening to JT, is you? Now nah, you ain't listening to JT. You need to read my book. Class Cloud. Get you some knowledge and you some understanding. Do you recognize JT? Ah, uh, you recognize JT. Yeah, I talk about I went to the hole. I got mate because I am a bad motherfucker. Ain't your nut nut. So what? You said only dumb niggas go to the hole. Smart niggas file lawsuits. They file restraining orders. They sue the prison and all that bullshit. I ain't got time to read and write. I ain't got time to read and write. I ain't your nut nigga. If you was a nigga, let me tell you something, ain't your nut nut. If you was right here right now, I stop the motherfucking Blessed out your goddamn mouth, <laughs> this motherfucker. I'm the sun. You a candle compared to me, motherfucker. I'm the knowledge, nigga. <laughs> this nigga ain't real. Hey, y'all, this, this
This nigga ain't real. What else you talk about? Ain't you nothing up? So what? I take black guys, the big one, like T Ma, you, so I can get views. Cause you know, I'm the big leader. I'm gonna crush y'all punk ass cause y'all ain't shit. You ain't got nothing on me, hey, you, no, no. you ain't got nothing on me, T-Mock. And everybody, all the other niggas, y'all ain't got shit on JT. I'm the smartest, intelligent motherfucker ever born. Can't do nothing with me. I'm that damn JT, buddy. Can't do a fuck, fuck, you fucking shit and fucking and motherfucking and shut fuck. And motherfuck you and bitch and take my ass and suck my... And suck the drawers and, and fuck you and your mama ass and your daddy ass and your and your you ain't how you like that ain't you nothing up you can't handle that wisdom you can't handle that knowledge motherfucker see that's too that's too high level for your punk ass you and T my bitch ass so what I'm jealous of y'all friendship I wish I had a friend like you and T my y'all made friends on YouTube and shit fuck that y'all ain't shit though. Cause I got a lot of friends. I got a whole, I got a whole lot. It's a whole lot of illiterate, ignorant people around. JT never gonna be lonely, motherfucker. Plus, I'm gonna be, I'm their leader. I'm the leader of the ignorant and illiterate black motherfuckers, niggas. For real, niggas. Real, recognize real. An illiterate motherfucker recognize another illiterate motherfucker. And we talk bullshit and we can understand it. Cause that's, that's how we roll in the hood. But you wouldn't know nothing about that, Angel. Nothing, nothing with your. Think you so you better than everybody else, you bitch made motherfucker. I hate. I, I hate Angel. Nothing, nothing. If I, nigga, if you ever come in my in my town, I'm bust you upside your motherfucking head. I hate. I, I, I hate Angel. Nothing, nothing. I hate him. I, I hate Angel. Nothing, nothing. Hate him. Can't stand that bitch. What does that nigga be talking about me? What does he say? Tell me I use profanity. And, and it's the white man profanity. Who give a motherfuck, nigga? Nigga, who give a fuck what it is? Tell me if I'm going to use profanity, make up my own shit. I can't make up nothing. I can't make up nothing. Read my biography. You bitch made nigga. I can't make up nothing. I don't have no new ideas. Sit my damn right on your ass. I only got a fourth grade education. I'm a bad mother. Hey, T Ma. T Ma. Hey, you know the. Go ahead, y'all mind with me. You can't you can't do nothing with JT Riley. <laughs> you can't do nothing with me, man. Bitch mate. Oh, that's the end of my list. Your bitch ass. I guess you didn't have all too much to say talking all that bullshit. Ain't you nothing now? Ain't you nothing now? Let me see if I can get my gold back in my mouth. Because you a bitch made motherfucker. Let me. Ain't you nothing now? You a bitch made motherfucker. That's where you live, ain't you? You a bitch made Nigga, bitch. Bitch, nigga, nigga on the bitch. On the bitch. Roll, roll, roll your boat. Roll, roll, roll your boat. Chip the down the stream. Man, 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 man. Life is but a dream. You can't, you can't do nothing with that, can you, Angel? t ma t ma you can't do nothing with that. Life is but a dream. Y'all bitch ass, y'all don't know nothing about stuff like that. I'm the second coming of Tupac, the real leader of black niggas in the nigger in the nigger United States. Bitch, motherfucker. Oh, Angel Nup Nup, always in my goddamn, I'm in your head, Angel Nup Nup. I'm in your head, t Mop. Yeah, cause y'all bitch ass, y'all wanna be me. Y'all wanna be like that damn JT. Now don't forget. Stay away from these stupid niggas. They ain't doing nothing. Old bastard. They just jealous of the young people. Y'all just jealous of the young people. Nigga, bitch, nigga, nigga, bitch my ass and suck my and, and take my food.
put in your ass and shoot you in your motherfucking uh, bitch eye. Get my book now. Seven for 50 cents. Fourth grade rat. Runaway rat. That's not my pet rat. My autobiography. Class clown. And learn to read with JT. With the Cadbury father. With JT Riley. Ain't you nothing now. Ain't you not now? What up, what up now, nigga? What up now, nigga? I'll catch y'all on the flip, y'all. To all my real old real niggas. JT, that damn JT out. In the name of my ancestors, peace, fam, and always, welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I'm your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. There's an old saying, if the shoe don't fit, you don't have to wear it. I'll say that again. If the shoe don't fit, you don't have to wear it. You can call me Anything that you want. You can call me racist. You can call me double. You can call me a homosexual. You can call Brother Tony anything you want. The only reason why it would bother me is because you are right and I'm pretending that I'm not what you call me. Because if the shoe don't fit, I don't have to worry. So you can call me a black racist 24 hours a day. That's not what I am. So that goes in one ear and out the other. I sleep very well at night. I feel no guilt because that's not what I am. You can call me a homosexual if you like. That don't bother me going this in and out the other. And if I was homosexual, I'd be a proud one. I'd be happy to tell you about it. I'll be in the closet and out of the closet. So what? But there are a lot of people because they are what you call them, but they are trying to be covert. They are undercover. They try to pretend that's not what they are. I'm not trying to hide from you. Whatever I am, that's what I am. And whatever, and whatever I am not, I'm not going to let you or nobody else make me something that I'm not. This video, this message is aimed towards Caucasian people. If the shoe don't fit, you don't have to worry. My Caucasian viewers and subscribers understand that down pat. So whatever come out of my mouth, they know I'm not talking about them, or her, or him. So they can absorb other things that is beneficial for us as a collective human family. But many of y'all are hypocrites in your faith. So when somebody points the finger at you, you get all upset because you are a racist cracker devil. You are wicked and a demon, just like some of these black people talk about and call some of these Caucasians on YouTube. Because you are that. But you're trying to trick folks like you've been tricking folks for the last few thousand years. You tricked them out of their land. You forced them to work for you for free or little or nothing. You are a deceiver and there is no... Uh, it should be no shock that you are called a devil. But if the shoe don't fit, no matter what they call you, white man, no matter what they call you, white woman, if you're not a devil, if that's not what's in your heart, you don't have to accept it. You don't have to prove a damn thing to them. Let your actions speak louder than your words. See, but some of y'all don't have no actions because you're fake. You talk this, but your actions don't show what you really are. 
My time is almost out. But I want to say this real quick. All of a sudden, white people fit. I talk loud. Most black people, a lot of us, we talk loud. In our neighborhood, around our family, black folks, we hyper like that. We talk loud. But then you get around certain white folks and they talk about, why, why you gotta yell? Ain't nobody gonna, that's how we talk. Then, in our community, there's such a thing called preaching. It's not yelling, it's bringing out a message, it's the emotion when you talk. I am sorry, Joe Osteen and all these old rinky dink white pastors don't have that real fire. They can't do nothing with me. All their emotions look fake because they don't have that soul in them. Are you saying black people got soul? Y'all said we got soul. We ain't said nothing. Black folks work from sun up to sundown for 300 years and we still smile and we dance and we sung. Did you? Now all of a sudden you fear. But when it's you who doing the yelling, you don't fear. Bring that plane over here, nigga. Hey, you fine black woman. Come over here so I can rape you. It's all right for you to do the yelling. Now all of a sudden you fear. You didn't fear when you was killing Native American people taking their land, where was this fear? Where was this fear when you was making black folks work from sun up to sundown and castrating black men, throwing our bodies in the river? Where was all of this fear? Now all of a sudden, fear. Where was your fear when you dropped bombs on Japan? Where was your fear? Where was your fear when you was dropping bombs on Africa? Where was your fear? Where was your fear, all this fear when you was dropping bombs in Vietnam? Where is your fear? Now all of a sudden, when you lie, when you cheat and you steal and you murder and you rape, everybody on the planet, where is all your fear? But now, people are coming up knowing who you really are. The devil is a fictional character, but you have those type of characteristics that they give this fictional character. Like that of a devil. Now you fear, you fear because those who you hurt might one day want to avenge you. And if you are not like your fathers, then you, your actions should show I'm not like my fathers. Don't get angry at me. I want to straighten up and make correct what my fathers does because I know my fathers and my ancestors done get dirty. But you got those who benefit from the evil of their ancestors and they want to try to hold on to that. They don't want to give you nothing. They don't want to make nothing right. So yeah, they fear. They fear of losing their world. That's why you fear. You fear because you were once on top and now something is threatening to bring you to the bottom. You want to see your white ass face all over the earth on magazines and cover. You fear those days are over. That's what you fear. You fear that these black people will stop being your damn voluntary slave and bow down to you, scratching where they don't itch, trying to please your right hand because you don't deserve it. You ain't done nothing to deserve the love and the respect that these black folks have done. If we weren't in the condition that we were in, we should have rose. Either we'd be dead or we'd really be free in this country. Just like you went to war with England to get your true freedom, then these black, if they weren't so messed up, that's what you fear. Because one day they might get, might get into their right state of mind. That's what you fear. And you get scary because a voice like mine shows no fear and reminds you, you ain't no damn sheep. You ain't no damn dove. You're a damn beast. You're a demon. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing. If the shoe don't fit.
you don't have to work. But a lot of y'all, the shoe fit. That's why it seems as though a race war or a war of evil versus good is inevitable. And it should happen because people should be tired of evil. Black or white or red or brown or whatever. You should be tired of suffering. You can't even live a peaceful damn life. You got to worry about not getting enough to eat, being raped, being murdered. The battle will fight to get rid of evil and wickedness once and for all. Have nothing to do with religion. It's about trying to live in peace and enjoy the little life that you got while you're on the planet. But some greedy, selfish ass people want to try to take everything off over and run everything. Want everybody to do everything their damn way. Those days, that should be over. Now you fear. Yeah, you should fear. But then we should also rejoice. Because the time for evil, unrighteous behavior, immoral behaviors, and this is coming from somebody y'all might consider atheist, but that time is over. And you should be happy it's over. So maybe your children can enjoy the peace that we were denied. Drop down your comments. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tony Give it raw. This was it is. The reality is temple on earth. And you don't have nothing to fear if you're right and good. Peace. In the name of my ancestors. Peace five and always. Welcome to another edition of the Reality is Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry, the mighty, 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 Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Rock. I would first like to say, if you knew Brother Tali, then you know that Brother Tully will never take a position that he cannot defend. Because if I take a certain position, then believe me, I have done my homework. And it also has been approved by the criteria of common sense, rationality, uh, logic, my own research and anal analyzation, so to speak. And it has gone through the self-thinking process. So any information being approved after going through all these systems, then I feel confident in embracing that knowledge, that wisdom, or that particular understanding. So whatever that comes from out of the Realities Temple, many find difficult to mess with because you are loyal to belief while I am dependent on trying to get as much facts as possible and also at the same time. If I can be proven with no shadow of a doubt through clear, convincing and overwhelming evidence that I am incorrect, I have no problem with saying that I'm wrong. But y'all take positions based on belief and even when proven wrong, you hold on to your lie. You hold on to your falsehood. So that's the difference. I stand for real truth. I stand for justice. I stand for fairness for all human beings. Not just black people, but all of humanity. I stand for justice and being treated fairly and equally to all life on this planet. And that's what makes 
me different from you because you only have a concern for your particular belief system. You don't care who you tread on. And in early America, one of the first flags to represent this nation was a snake. And it was a saying above the snake, don't tread on me. You know how it is when you're walking in the woods and maybe your intent was not to step on the snake because snakes are slithering creatures and most times they blend in with the environment. It's very easy to tread on a snake. But I guess the, the makers of this particular flag, you know that a snake is poisonous. So it's giving you a warning, don't tread on me. Because if you step on the snake, then he's poisonous and he got a bad bite waiting for you. So don't tread on me. I'm going to stand on mine. This video, actually, I'm going to let the more information box do my speaking for me. And as a black man, most Caucasian people don't have respect for you. In order to get Caucasian people to listen to you, you have to go well above the call of duty. Now, if a Caucasian person said the same thing, they look stupid and foolish. But because it's coming out of the mouth of another Caucasian person, chances are it's more acceptable. And also this is true for the dark European. The Benedict Arnold, the nigger trash slave who lick these people in their butt, who, give, who don't give a damn about their own people. They are voluntary modern slaves that exist simply for the purpose of uplifting their oppressor's children. Those children of the people that lynched their ancestors, raped their mothers, castrated their fathers, they hold great love for them. So much of the things that I say to the dark European fall on deaf ears. But if you can get the white man to say that it's true, if you can get the Caucasian to say that it's true, now the Uncle Tom, dark European, Negro, nigga, trash, Benedict Arnold, Judas, trailer trash, they'll begin to listen. That's why I ask them to stay off my page. So in the more information box, you have an article written by a Caucasian person. I don't know whether he's Irish. He sounds like he's an Irish person trying to teach his people their history, unadulterated. So I will let him do the talking. And you bring your comments and you call him a lot. It's not me. I agree with what he has. So don't say, Brother Talik said this, Brother Talik said that. You read if you can. Some of y'all have problem with reading. And if you do read, you have problem with comprehension and understanding. But here it is, coming from the mouth or the written words of another white person who so happens to be attending an anti-racism conference. He's going to teach you, Irish person, your history. And what you're going to learn is that in the beginning, Irish people were oppressed by other Caucasian people, not by black folks. You were oppressed by other white people or Caucasian, Europeans. And you were just a little bit above the black slave. Just a little taste. I'm not going to go around and talk about whose atrocity was worse. 
Because a punch in the face is a punch in the face. How can I say or make a claim my punch in the face is worse than your punch in the face? But the difference is my punch kept coming. Your punch came to a halt. And the effects of my punches, as time went on, became worse. For an example, you still know that you're Irish. Black people have no idea of what they are. Some black people call themselves Irish, which we have intermingled with Irish. So you might have some Irish blood in you. But when you look in the mirror, and as far as anybody else is concerned, you're you black. You're an African American. So it doesn't make any difference. Black people try to be white. They get plastic surgery to straighten their nose and get rid of their thick lips and straighten their hair and bleach their skin to color themselves. Do, car do Caucasian Irish people, do you do that? You have Irish pride. You have a homeland where you come from that you know for a fact. We don't know jack about who we are. We are confused. We have no idea. See, this is what you must also understand is that it's not about you as an individual today. Your ancestors, Irish person, those who gain leadership positions that call themselves Irish, they developed a plan to get up out of their oppression. And the way they got up out of their oppression was to was to oppress another people like themselves. At first in the oppression, the Irish and the so-called Negro, Black American, color, whatever you want to call, call them at the time, you were in the same type of situation. But in order to rise, you had to knock the Black man even lower than what you were. So you can come, come up out of the hole. And eventually your leadership embraced the oppressor. And when they accepted you as a white man, you forgot about your teammate in oppression, which were black people. That's what your ancestors done. And since you have become comfortable in with the oppressor, you no longer care about the oppressed. Now, black people, we suffer because of what our so-called leadership does. I believe it was back during the time of Abraham Lincoln where these blacks was offered that the United States would help them form a homeland somewhere in Africa or whatever. And our leadership said, no, sir, we like to ride here with you, sir. And Abraham Lincoln and the leadership told them, as long as you are here, it's not going to be an easy journey. Oh, that's all right, sir. We can make it, sir. So I'm paying when our people could have been somewhere else, becoming independent, a strong nation of our own. Now we're here suffering. Become the ultimate beggar, becoming the ultimate slaves. All our work, all our talent, instead of coming to us, now it goes to the racist Caucasian people who are in charge. Not really their fault. It is the fault of our so-called leadership, of which we now will reject, and of which we now will attempt to get our people out of that slave mindset, to go back to ourselves, because if we are adult men and women, we should want to be independent or be like the Irish. 
that have taken their place, gaining much respect, gaining much economic power in this nation. If we are unable to do that, if the people in power don't want us there, then we should seek separate lands. We should go and take our talents, our money, our resources, our lives, to a place where we are accepted like how the Irish became accepted into this society or we should seek land of our own and build our own government, our own laws, our own educational system, our own media, everything ourselves, just like any, any other people who have their sanity. But we don't have our sanity. We have been made insane. We have been turned into the ultimate slave. So Irish person, let us talk about this, read this man's article, and learn your true history. And if you can refute what he said, bring it. But I really doubt it, because he's telling you how it is. We are suffering due to our ancestors. But since you are in a better position, you can, you can help change it. Or do you enjoy what your fathers have done for you? <laughs> it's on you. Thank you for listening. It's your brother Tony Keep it raw. Read in the more information box. Read this article. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace, love, and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Angel Snub Number 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Ruff. This little talk might take two videos, so please bear with me and uh, I thank you so much for traveling with me on this short journey. The topic of this video, of course, is the, or an episode that I uh, witnessed or viewed from the reality series called The Housewives of Atlanta. But before I give my two cents in on this particular episode, which was a recent uh, happening on Bravo, I think that it's the, the cable, the cable network is Bravo, I believe. I would like to speak very quickly to the black man. Now, there are black males who have gotten very angry with me because of my pro-black woman position. And some may want to know, why, Brother Talit, are you so hard on black men? Don't you see these women do this and these women do that? You should stand with other males. When they become a man, when they become a male, then I will stand with you. The reason why I speak the way I speak in reference to so-called black men, when I see one, I will address one. Well, this is what they say. Brother Talik talks like that because he was raised by women, surrounded by women. He never had a man in his life. I had a man in my life, a good man in my life. One was physical. He was taken away from me early in my life. Wonderful, strong black man. He was not my physical or biological father, but he treated me like his son and I will always remember that man to the day I leave this planet. Then my other father that I never met, I found on a piece of paper 
ink and wood pulp. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who raised strong black men that changed the dynamic of black life in America even to this day. Because I stand because of my father, Elijah Muhammad, whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, his influence, he became a father that was missing in my home. The picture behind me, Brother Malcolm, was a man in my life. The picture right on the side of Malcolm, Brother Marcus Garvey, another man in my life. There were a lot of men that came into my life. This is what I was looking for. And so, although they were not in my house, they became part of my mind. And they were the examples to me of what a man should be. And you, who come to me crying about the black women do this and the black women do that, you are nothing like Malcolm X. You're nothing like Elijah. You're nothing like Marcus or any of these men in my life or the man called Lionel Chavis who grew me and was my physical father when I was a child you're nothing like none of them you are weak to me I am a lover of strong black men but I don't like weak men. And that's your problem. That's why the women talk about you like a dog. Because you are weak men. If you was anything like Elijah or Malcolm or Marcus or Martin or any of our strong black men that have stood up against the oppressor, if you was anything close, they wouldn't be talking about you. These men took care of their women. They took care of their children. They took care of their family. They handled their business in the community and they faced the oppressor. Day in and day out. If you was anything close, then they will respect you. But you won't respect and honor just because you have a penis. And that's not how it works. You won't respect, and that goes from anybody. Then you got to earn it. If you're a woman and you act like a little whore or you're a little prostitute or you're a little stripper thing, you have no respect for yourself. Don't expect nobody to give you honor. You're not a goddess. You're not a queen. You are what they call the slut. You're the trash. You cannot expect to be to get honor and glory and don't earn it. That comes, that goes for anybody. It goes for me, you, anybody. We want glory and honor and respect just because we believe that's what we are, but you have not earned anything. So as black men, I expect a lot from us. And when I hear black men grumbling to me, oh, the black women this and the feminists that and the blah, 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 it sickens me to my stomach. You make me want to throw up. These men behind me and the men that I know of that was an example for manhood in my life didn't sit around and complain, talk about the women this and the women that. You're supposed to be strong and you show weakness. And a woman, the female, is wired to be attracted to strength. That's why she is attracted to those brothers y'all call thug. Because a thug may not be all that. But a thug will take out a pistol and handle his business. I bet you're not going to mess with him and his woman. But y'all don't have no heart. You don't have that fire in you. She don't see it. But you want to be respected like that. That's all you got to do. Is stand up and be a man. Not talk like a man. And act like one. Be one. And if you're not challenging this oppressor, and if you're beating on the woman verbally, you don't have to beat on her physically. You're not a man because men don't beat women, whether, regardless whether it be 
physical or mental. You don't do her like that. And you wonder why she don't like you, don't have no respect for you. Men know they can't do it by themselves. You have to go into the gutter and uplift other men. You want to do it by yourself because see, I have a degree. I make some money. And I do this. I'm a good man. What's so what's good about you? Oh, cause you got a job? Because you drive a fancy car? Well, clearly, it seems as though the women don't still don't want your ass. Because they'll rather go to the brother that don't have a damn thing. Yeah, he's a nothing. But he got something that you lack that you should have. Because you think that you good. But you weak. While the so-called thug brother got his swag on. And he's strong. Got personality. And you're a nerd. But you think somebody's supposed to just like you just simply because you got a job. I'm good. What make what make you good? You're not challenging the thug because you should be going out in the street taking the benefits, the positive things of you and going out in the street and help that brother be more than a thug. To better him. Uplift your brother. And when you uplift other men, they... That in turn will inspire and uplift the women. The women will produce you better children. That's the avalanche effect. But y'all so silly and stupid. You'll rather fall victim to the old Willie Lynch switcheroony. Divide and conquer. Because you so weak. Oh, the women. They on Oprah. Oh, the women. They on Mori Povey. They talk about us. They who gives a damn? You don't allow the enemy to use divide and conquer tactics. You should be smart. When they talk about you, you just smile. And if it's true, then you just be better. Try to improve yourself. You don't get into a sparring match in public with the black woman or black children or anybody and show that you have malice and hatred towards your own. Thus, you don't benefit black people. You benefit trying to save your own ego because you're pitiful and you help the oppressor. Then you're going to turn around and talk about, well, the white man, you helping the damn white man when you attack black women in the public. Shut your damn pitiful ass pathetic mouth. I know you don't like what I'm saying because you, y'all pitiful, pitiful men. And me, I'm not attracted to weak, unintelligent men. Because if you're smart, you know that, you know that your woman and we are a destroyed people. So of, so of course, the Caucasian racist people are going to take advantage of the black woman who does not have a protector because you have failed to do your job as a protector, defender, nurturer of your women and children. Not her fault. Your fault. Our fault as men. And women have responsibility too. But you can't say just them. It's us. We are destroyed people. When we allow, at one time, Willie Lynch divide and conquer the men versus the women, the women versus the men, the young versus the old, that old Willie Lynch tactic, the light skin versus the dark skin, y'all still in 2010 falling for the same nonsense. The revolutionary versus the uncle town. We all still falling for the same crap. We should recognize divide and conquer tactics and now play this sick game because it's a game that we always have been losing for 400 years. But we should be able to turn the game around, flip the script, and turn the game and make it our game. Where they begin to follow our rules, but we're so stupid. And we 
think that we are intelligent, but clearly we're not because we still fall for the same old okie doke. Oh, well, there you go. Because it doesn't make no difference. As soon as I shut up, there goes some black man. And the woman do this. And there goes some black woman. Oh, y'all do go. Y'all do, 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 do. Two fools. And guess what? Two fools deserve to be slaves. And that's what y'all are. Dark European Negro slaves. Because real black people have learned our lesson from the past. And we ain't going for the old okie doke. We have become so dumb. We believe our own stereotypes. I hear these men and these women do this and she's a thugette and she act like this and she run her mouth and she do this and that. Then they go to women. Y'all do the same thing. All these men, they don't take care of their babies. They, the men do this and the men do that. So you have the men have their stereotype of women that they believe. You have to say you believe because the reality is that's not us. That's not our women. As we as a people, they talk about the men do this and the men do that. The women they complain, but that's not the black man. That's certain black men. It's certain black women. Go into the next video. Hold on, y'all. Got good to me. In the name of my ancestors, peace, five, and always welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. And you snub number seven. Your brother and hopefully your friend. I hope that we can be friends. I'm known as Talik Ibn Ra. I always have to say hopefully your friend because it is my intent to be your friend. I have never in my life and I have been on this planet over 40 years I have never in my life harmed or caused somebody to be harmed never I don't even think about hurting people now if you want to hurt me I have the right to self-defense and we all should fight with those who try to hurt us. There are people who want to make mockery of black people. Who, is, who believe that we should be happy with the crumbs from this society. A society that our ancestors built free of charge for over 300 years with over 100 years of underpaid labor. And we should sit around and let those who enjoy what they stole, let them enjoy what they stole in peace and harmony. I will never let you sit around. You thief, you murderer, you killer, you slave owner. Slave owners children, I'm not going to stand around and let you enjoy the benefits from my ancestors' hard work. You crazy as hell. I will talk. If that's all I can do, I will talk. And I will not let you smile in my face with your false, false ass friendship. Because if you was a real friend, because see, I, I am a real friend to you. When I say hopefully your friend, I'm a real friend to you because if I have an ink pen, that ink pen is also yours. Because we are brothers and sisters. Whatever I have, 
you can have also. We share, but those who we are dealing with are liars. They talk about brotherhood. They talk about diversity. They talk about equality. But when you see their actions, you don't see diversity. You don't see brotherhood. You don't see love because they are liars. And you have the upper time, dark European, and even Native American European, these people who have just accepted, I'm a loser. You ever heard that term, that uh, quote, if you can't beat them, join them. And that's what they have did. So you got the dark Uncle Tom, European, Native American, and probably some other Chinese and Asian. You don't give a damn about your ancestors. You don't give a damn about their suffering. Here you are, licking the behind of those who make fun of your people or who have conquered your people. Y'all some sad, sick things. Don't come on my page. Just stay, no, I'm not your friend. I'm not a friend of cowards. And silly people, you're going to love the children of those who destroyed your people. Get out of here. They have shown no remorse, offered no apology. They have done nothing to heal the injury that they caused. No, not that they caused. Some of them are still causing, but if you are in seats of power and the government of America made slavery or any other atrocity legal, then it is up to the children to clean up the mess of their ancestors. But are they trying to do that? No, because they enjoy what their forefathers stole, what they raped for, what they murdered for. And that's why... They hate another white man, Tim Wise. That's why they hate me, because the voices of justice rising. And you can hate all you want to, and you can dislike all you want to. It's not going to change nothing. Because until you clean the wound, till you stitch it up, it's always and still going to be there. So if it's not me, if it's not Tim Wise, if it's not somebody, it's going to be, somebody going to be there, because the wound is not healed. And you're not going to enjoy the spoils of your theft <laughs> no more. So keep going through the airport, taking off your panties, taking off your drawers because of the terrorism. You haven't seen nothing yet because the terrorism going to be your own citizens right here in your backyard. Y'all so arrogant, silly, and foolish. But that's not my subject. My subject is I want to talk to this young man about should I go to the military. I listened to this video and I want to say I don't know what your sex is. It sounds like a young man. I don't it sounds like a young man and this is what I do know. You hurt deep inside. And the bottom line from what I hear in your voice is you don't you do not want to go to the military but you have people who apparently don't give a damn about you, urging you to go to the military. You have to be at least 21 to be an over-the-road trucker. You can be a truck driver, almost like going to the military, and drive trucks over the road and make from $50,000 to maybe $100,000 a year. Don't have to go to the military. There are a lot of things, if you think about it, there are a lot of options that are out there that you can take advantage of instead of going to the military. But you see, and you must understand, and especially if you're black, why you want to join the military and fight for a nation that don't do nothing for us? Our unemployment is 17%. In major metropolitan cities, while the average is 9%, 17 compared to 9. What is the government doing for you? But you, but see, it's designed that way. See, you must understand that the poor and the middle class, you are placed in this position 
so you can be the guinea pig and the blind slave to the rich and the elite. You fighting, you're not fighting for democracy. You're not fighting for freedom. You're fighting for oil companies, rubber, diamonds. Has nothing to do. Even World War II, Vietnam War, all America's wars, except the Revolutionary War. The Revolutionary War had a little uh, legitimacy because they were sick and tired of being exploited by England, but then they turned around and exploited the black slave. Hypocrites. But they wanted to be free. But all of America's wars had something to do with fighting over material things. They went into Vietnam not because of fighting communism. They was over there trying to steal those people resources. The rubber, the diamond, they have gold, uh, cheap labor, all those different things. World War II, it was about oil. Who going to control the oil and the resources of the earth? That's what the World War I and World War II was about. Had nothing to do with the freedom of this and that and that. That's what it was about. You, if you notice, you don't see rich people's children run into the military. Do they? Only the poor and the middle class, because it's designed that way. And they begin, they begin to take away your options so they then they can produce the type of mentality that you're showing on your video. Hopeless and helpless. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Then they try to make the military look good. Uh, we'll pay for your college. We'll do this for you. We'll do that for you. How many body bags have come back to America since Iraq and Afghanistan? Over 4,000. So they was promised college. They was promised all these good things. So here you are. They don't, the government don't have to pay. Then I want you to think about something else. Before you make your decision to fight for a wicked and corrupt government, they liars. George Bush said that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Remember that? They knew there was no weapons of mass destruction. They needed an excuse to jump on Saddam Hussein and Iraq. They are liars. They are deceivers. They told black people, 40 acres and a mule. I'm still waiting for my damn 40 acres and my mule. I will take it right now today. Get my 40 acres and a mule. These people are liars. Why do you want to go fight and risk your life for their benefit. Before you make this decision. That's going to affect you the rest of your life. Look how many American soldiers. Is homeless and insane on the streets. Go and visit a VA hospital. Talk to those soldiers. Half of their face blown off. All amputeed up. Ask them about how easy it is to get your benefits. Ask the soldiers. Many women, female soldiers, are homeless on the street. Oprah Winfrey had a show. Female soldiers, more and more of them, are coming back to nothing. Where is their college? Where they don't have a house, they don't have nothing. And what is so sad, these soldiers said, I did it for my country. No, you didn't. You did it for McDonald's. You did it for Shell Oil Company. You did. That's who you did it for. You didn't do it for your damn country. This country don't give a damn about you. Now, if you, you want to go give your life to these demons, then you do that. But always know, all these people, that there are people who know that you are a fool. Even the soldiers themselves, many of them are not patriotic. They are in the service because of economics. I need a job. What am I going to do? And they set this up to get you. There are no rich people's children. All these senators, all these senators and House of Representatives type folks in the press, ain't 
they know about none of their people is in the in the military. But they would send the poor and the middle class to fight on foreign soil for freedom. For freedom these people never ask you to get for them. They don't even like you. And the people you're trying to free killing the American soldiers. You need to think about it. Don't allow these fools to trick you. Don't listen to these Uncle Tom dark European Negroes. Don't listen to these people who have been deceived by the master deceiver. They are liars. It's, it's quite clear as day. But they know you are helpless. They know that you are hopeless. So they're going to make these pretty commercials. Come join the army. Be all you can be. There is no be all you can be when you are in a casket. That's all you can be done and did and dirt. That's it. Don't let these people exploit and use you. I know that it's tough. But don't allow these people to use your body. Let them fight their own damn wars. Because they don't care nothing about you. Thank you for listening. Talk to me. Drop down your comments. This was it is. The reality is temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Reality Stuff on Earth. I'm the host of this internet ministry. The, well, I'm known as the, the mighty, 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 and your snub number seven. Mm. Your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rock. Now, I probably sort of messed up my little introduction because it is early, early in the morning. But uh, I just wanted to make a couple of videos before I uh, make this trip out of town. So uh, I wanted to get these uh, topics off my chest. I don't know why I got an itch in the back of my neck. <laughs> oh, man. It's probably some of that bad lotion or something. I don't know. Anyway, our time runs out on this busy. Let ye get busy. Some of you have asked me, why do I talk the way I do? What's up? With the yelling. You call it yelling. I prefer to say the preaching. So why do you have to yell? Why do you have to preach the way that you do? It is because you have and we have black people in America. We have vicious enemies that want our destruction. So when they bring their propaganda and when they bring their foolishness this way, when they begin to even attempt to come to this house, once they hear this voice, they might have second thoughts and say, I think that's one of the Negroes I better not mess with. But of course, you have the arrogant and the foolish so they step into the house and then they get smashed, they get crushed like they should. And they should get smashed and they should get crushed because they bring propaganda, they bring falsehood, lies, deceit, and manipulation that is hurtful to my people. So anybody that tries to hurt black people in America, you are not my friend. You are an enemy that needs to be dealt with. So those who lie and try to, to deceive and try to market 
this corny delusion called black supremacy that don't exist. Black races that don't exist. They never stop their deceit. So I have no choice but to also stay in the fire. So when they bring their nonsense, I as a defender of my people should be right there with the left. When they bring the right hook, I bring the left hook, the jab, and get to smashing them, breaking them down. Make them cry like a baby. So that brings me to this particular video where these wicked and deceitful or maybe just ignorant propagandists decide to try to recruit others to support their wicked and dark, dark in a negative way agenda. So you have these covert, racist Caucasians, faceless, of course, on YouTube, faceless. They can't show their face. But uh, they are out to recruit other races of people in order to make them have hatred toward black people. I was watching this video where... I would guess it's an Asian person. They are faceless also. Cause, so I don't know exactly what they are. And they also don't allow video responses. They also don't allow comments. So when you see something like that, that's questionable in itself. That means they don't want nobody to attempt to challenge them and make them look bad. So I just want to put this out here and hope and hopefully some fool will believe my nonsense. So I'm watching this video. What is it called? I, I put where's that? Where's that at? Oh, it's a video. It was talking about these young black men called them racist, and the Asian people are sick of being targets of crime by these black races. Let me. Say, say this uh, very quickly. There's no such thing as a black racist. You have individuals, certain young black male individuals, that have decided to commit a crime and target uh, Asian people. No more than a criminal would target the elderly or the sick easy targets or a rapist target women because women are weak or a pedophile attacks children has nothing to do with racism or hatred I'm a criminal I'm looking for an easy target and the young black man that was interviewed said I don't hate Asian but they when I when I when I was a criminal I targeted them because they are easy targets they carry valuables, they they won't resist, and chances are they don't snitch either. So this is a good target for me. Has nothing to do because I'm black. I hate Asian. I have a criminal mind I'm doing I'm exhibiting criminal behavior and I'm these are easy targets. But those who are trying to stir up the racial hatred pot want to try to make it a race issue. See Black hate Asians, you are a liar. Because the young black man said that, but they still took it out of context. And, and black people, they're going to take the actions of these poor, misguided, and lost individuals and try to make it a race issue and say all black people hate Asians. They hate Chinese and Japanese and whatever, Koreans. There is nothing historical. There has been no conflict between Africans and Asians as far as I can I know. I have not been told. You can tell me about it. Anyway, even if that's true, that's between those Africans and the Chinese or whoever. And we don't hear nothing about it, so apparently it's not, it's not much. 
But here in America, there is no feud between black people and Asian folk. If there was a feud, if there was hatred, then why would Koreans and Chinese and all these people come into our neighborhoods and set up businesses and get rich off of our money? Because if we had that type of hate, we'll hate your ass out of our neighborhood. Because if I hate you, I don't want your damn Chinese rice. If I hate you, I don't care nothing about your weed, the, 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 the uh, weed shops that you set up and sell black women weed. We would get your ass out of our neighborhood if, we're, if we hate you and we racist like you're trying to claim. You're full of garbage. You're always trying to start up some kind of trouble because the troublemaker, when it's all said and done, the real troublemaker is the Caucasian people. They want somebody because they have done evil because they are the real racist. They have attempted to enslave and exploit Asian people. They have attempt well not attempted. They have conquered black people and Africans. They have done that to both parties. So here they are. They are sick of always getting the blame of being a racist because they are the real racist. So now they want to try to make races out of other people who had no conflicts among one another. That is deceitful, manipulative. And that is the, that is the reason why you are seen as a devil around the earth. There is no beef between black people and Asian folks. Historically or even in America. A crime is not racism. And that's all that was in. They, there are other countless examples where you have black people involved in harming Asian people. But of course, we don't never hear about the Asian people attacking black folks. Because the same thing, and not because black folks did something to them, but because of the same mentality. People just involved in crime. Crime is not racism. But you have these propagandists, these people who want to try to make these fictional fantasy conflicts to make them racist when they're nothing but criminal activity. The same thing goes with Mexicans and blacks and anybody else. All this has nothing to do with racism. All this, the man behind it, when it's all said and done, if y'all stop being emotional and think about it, it's the racist Caucasian people and their media. Because they control things. They put these things in motion. They started these conflicts. They are the ones who hit both of us upside the head, hide their head, we look at each other, jump on each other, then here they come like they the good guy. Why y'all doing that? Why y'all can't get along? WikiLeaks gave you an example and a sign of their mentality. They smile in your face and stab you in the back. Well, aren't you doing the same thing? Saying all white people? I never said all white people because if I said all white people or all Caucasians, that would be not fair. That would not be just. I would be just as wacky as the ones I'm talking about. You need to wake up and smell the coffee. If I'm incorrect, if black people really hate, and black people don't mean these individual young men committing crimes, we as a people have no beef with Asian people, and Asian people have no beef with us. But there are those who have beef, who have beef with both of us, who don't like dark people, whether you are Asian or whether you're black, they don't like you anyway. Calling your name behind your back, you are slant eyed this and you are slant eyed that, octopus eating this, nigga this and I'll lynch you that. They are the troublemakers trying to be slick. But it's not going to work here. Because I don't care about specific criminals, even 
different organizations doing, they're going to do their thing. But they don't re represent Asians and they don't represent black people. These are individual situations, whatever. Has nothing to do with one race not liking another. In fact, like I always tell you, we need to get out of this race garbage and move forward because something is about to hit humanity <laughs> that you've never seen before. And it's going to be so horrible, the scripture says that you're going to wish for death and death will never be, won't, no, won't be nowhere around. That's something to think about. You want to die, but you can't. Oh, man. And the person that you hate, you going to depend on to survive. Y'all better wake up and smell the coffee and stop getting all caught up in this foolishness, childish stuff. Discuss, discuss our situation open and honestly. Quash it. And let us move on to bigger and better things. Otherwise, you going to get caught up and suffer in the greatest disaster that humanity has ever seen. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This was it is. Think people for yourself. The reality is temple on earth. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother administer Talik IBNRAD.